What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Gold Gal Getaways Travel Podcast. My name is Josh, and each and every week I'm joined by my friend and co-host, Matt. How you doing, man? What's going on, Josh? Happy f- Thursday. Nope. nope. Yeah, it Good is Thursday. Thursday this week. We had a little audible um, with some scheduling, which actually works out perfect, uh, especially for myself, uh, because we're actually going to be traveling tomorrow night anyways. And yeah, so it's Thursday. Uh, And we're going to have a good episode, I think, tonight. We're going to be talking about all-inclusive resorts. Uh, This is not just Sandals, which is uh, where Taylor and I were just at earlier this week. And you might notice I'm in a different space, and that's mostly because the studio room is looks like a bomb went off. Uh, Trying to unpack and repack uh, because we have more stuff that we have to go do. So, uh, yeah, you ready, Matt? Let's let's do this. We got we got a lot of information out, coming out tonight to a lot of people. We do. Uh, so if you guys don't know who Gold Girl Getaways is, we are a full service travel agency uh, helping you plan uh, anything to anywhere, whether that is to Walt Disney World or to maybe an all inclusive resort or uh, within the next year as international travel starts to open back up, uh, we can start helping you plan something over the ocean, whether that's uh, to Tokyo for maybe a little. Uh, Disney, or maybe that's into Europe to explore uh, Norway, Sweden, all these things. I've been, you know, that's where my mind's been lately. So um, whether you have big kids, small kids, or no kids at all, we have an agent who can help you plan your next destination vacation anywhere around the world. You can uh, head on over to www.goldgoutgetaways.com. And we are also an authorized Disney vacation planner, which is uh, a really great designation that we've gotten from Disney. Uh, for all the hard work that we have put in. So, um, you know, we know what we're doing when we, when it comes to planning Disney vacations. So if you're Definitely. looking to start planning and you need a little bit of help or maybe uh, even booking those dining reservations, things like that, that come with uh, planning a Disney vacation, we are here to help you. So, whew, oh boy. That's a lot right there. That is a lot. That's always a lot. Um, <laughs> and of course, Matt and I, you know, we don't do this podcast by ourselves. Um, Because if we did, I don't know, Matt, what do you think? Probably not the greatest. Uh, I think our subscribers would be a lot lower. Probably, probably. Uh, you know, we're just not always that interesting. And so each and every week we like to have on another Gold Gun Getaways travel agent. And this week we have got Paul. What's going on, man? How you oh, doing? Yeah. Good. How are y'all? We are good. Great. It's It's not Friday. <laughs> it is not. It is Thursday. And we appreciate you, Paul, for being available on this Thursday. Well, I'm here because you told me to be here, Matt. So um. hey, hey, <laughs> that's what friends are for. I we kind of right, go yeah. in and hand a little bit. <laughs> uh, Paul, why don't you go ahead and tell everybody uh, a little bit about yourself? Uh, maybe what you uh, specialize in, or what you're really good at helping people with when it comes to planning uh, their next vacation. Uh, my name is Paul Schmeckenbecker. I've been with GoGill. Um, for a little over a year now. So this uh, first year has been not what I expected. You know, I expect to be booking a lot of travel and stuff, and that's starting to happen. Uh, so we're kind of excited that everything's starting to to pick back up. Everybody's starting to want to travel, get out of the house, and um, we're just happy to be here to help out on that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we, like I said earlier, when we started the podcast, um, we were just at Sandals in Antigua, and we, <laughs> I'm laughing because it's funny for me, maybe not for everybody watching, but we met a couple uh, who have been going to Antigua since they opened up on July 4th, uh, about 34 times. I'm Dang. not sure that 34 days, sorry, not 34 times. I should specify. Uh. Um, they've been there 34 days since it's uh, opened. They've traveled back and forth. They live in Tampa. Um, I don't think that there's any way that they would ever be watching this podcast. Uh, of course, I know this is family friendly, but nor do I think that they would remember uh, that we even had a conversation. But, um, you know, we're talking all about all inclusives tonight. It is uh, a wonderful, it is a, you know, what could be a very perfect destination for you to take, whether uh, you're going to go to someplace that is family friendly or you're going to go to someplace that is all uh, just adults. Uh, there is really a place for you to go where you can just kind of kick back and relax and you don't have to worry about a thing. So I'm excited. Paul's going to be walking us through that tonight because he has got some, uh, he's got more knowledge on it than I do. Matt, 
You don't have I'm any a rookie. I'm, I'm, I'm no clue about all inclusive. I oh, want to go because I want to go to a swim up bar. That's my, Ooh. that's my, that's yeah. my bucket list. Alaska swim up bar. Yes. Not in the same yeah. place. Though. That, that would be an issue. Uh, That'd maybe. Be a little cold there. <laughs> maybe. Depends. If the water's heated, it should be okay. So, yeah. <laughs> but it's probably not. Um, Real quick comment, which uh, I could address later on, but I just saw it now. Teresa said, is it open now? People can book. Yes, it is open. Um, a lot of these destinations are open now, and you can go. There are some travel restrictions, which we can talk about later on. Um, but before we do that, we will get into, uh, you know, kind of what we always break into for uh, each. Bup, bup, sorry, guys. Uh, we'll get into what we always get into each and every week. So uh, Sponsorship. Each and every week, this podcast is brought to you by Adam's Online Cooking Classes. Uh, you can learn to cook some really cool different types of uh, dishes, whether that is Mediterranean or Italian or, uh, I don't know, uh, maybe some type of crazy cool pizza. Uh, right now, we are doing a theme park cooking copycat series. That's always a mouthful for me. Um, it's a lot of fun. I do have a video clip that I feel obligated to share now each and every week. Um, we always have a really great time. And at the end of this one, we always try to like, you know, hold the plate up and show you guys. <laughs> and oh, there it goes. Uh, I'll play it one more time if you if you if you <laughs> missed it. Pay attention. Here it comes. <laughs> Whoop. Yep. It uh, fell right onto the laptop actually. And uh, everything still works, but you know, we have a good time. Food is really great. And what's really nice is that Adam teaches you uh, techniques and things that you can take not only from that dish, but, you know, further uh, along, you know, down the road, I guess, whenever you go to cook other things. So um, it's a lot of fun. I encourage you guys to sign up and check it out. And if you're interested, you can send an email to adamgoldgell at gmail.com and uh, sign up. Yeah. And uh, moving on from that, we're going to talk about some group cruises. Matt? Yep. It's pretty much the same same as we've been talking about over the last couple of weeks. So we're going to go February school vacation, February 19th, 2022, out of Miami on the Symphony of the Seas. Uh, that's going to be making stops in Perfect Day, Coco Cay, Antigua, and St. Thomas. Uh, we like that cruise so much. We're going to do it again April school vacation as well. Um, same stops, same ship, maybe same people, never know. Um, and anybody who's interested in that can send an email to events at goldgalgetaways.com. And like usual, welcome to Miami for February. <laughs> welcome to Miami, the sequel for, I for like April. It. I like it. <laughs> I like it. Josh, you want to talk a little bit of Alaska? Oh no, actually, we get we can skip. You want to skip that one first, and we can talk a little. Yeah, the December. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So it. we're gonna we're gonna try to do a group group cruise for the Barbados trip that Josh and I are on, uh, which is December twelfth, twenty twenty one. So it's this December, seven night Southern Caribbean island hop, leaving out of Barbados with stops in Trinidad, Tobago, St. Vincent's, Dominica, and St. Lucia. Um, Want to come along? Events at goldgalgetaways.com. Subject, Barbados with the boys. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Josh, I know we talked about it a little off the air. I did some some price checking a little bit with the, the deal that Royal Caribbean has going right now. You can yep. get an inside stateroom for that cruise. For, for two people, for just o over $1,000 right now. Which is which a fantastic is deal. Yeah. And, you know, I think a lot of people might be thinking, well, why would I want an inside state or an inside state room? Uh, and Matt and I were talking about this too. You know, this is a heavy, uh, heavy is the wrong word. This, this is a cruise where we're going to be stopping basically every day. There are no sea days. Yep. Um, so you don't really need to have that ocean view or even a veranda so to speak because you're probably not going to be in your room that much um of course obviously if you go you know it's it's not mandatory that you do everything that we do um but we are going to try and do some different things and have some different events do some other uh, excursions and it's going to be a lot of fun yeah. i can't wait so i i just booked my flight this morning I'm, i saw the book i saw the book mine but uh i'll be on that shortly once i can get uh 
I have to see. I have to see. Uh, I'm so afraid. I don't want to fly American Airlines again, but we won't go down that road. So <laughs> now, Josh, are you going to take the long way around this time or are you going to go direct flight? Well, Paul, it seems that <laughs> any time that I fly anywhere other than uh, back home, I have to take a long way around. I cannot, for whatever reason, I can never get a direct flight for where I want to go now. So um, it, it'll probably end up being some roundabout way or something like that, you know. Or I got to fly from Orlando for 45 minutes to Miami to then fly down there. So who knows? We'll see. We'll see. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. If you guys are interested, like Matt said, subject to events at goldgallgetaways.com, which the email is up on the screen. Barbados with the boys. It's going to be fun. I'm, I'm super pumped. Uh, and it's going to be something that's a little bit different. So seeing yeah, some definitely. cool stops that haven't seen before. Um, and then, of course... A fantastic cruise, uh, another fantastic cruise in February. Uh, something that I am so looking forward to. I was so disappointed whenever, um, you know, we had to move it this year, but it is all all good. Uh, is our seven night Alaskan cruise out of Seattle, uh, July fifteenth, twenty twenty two. This is a once in a lifetime type of destination, uh, and I really, really encourage you guys to come along. Don't feel like you have to, again, tag along with everything that we do. We are going to be planning some group events, uh, excursions, things on the ship. Uh, I would love to be able to do some like wildlife kind of sightseeing excursion tour if they have that. A lot of people might not want to do that. So um, we're going to be going down through all the excursions and different things that we can do as those things become available. And um, it's going to be fun. We have a, a great group that is going so far. And of course, uh, as I show on this podcast every week, you know, if you want to see these uh, amazing dance moves that I have, this is our this is our last group cruise that we did. So much fun! Um, but you got to be on the ship if you really want to witness firsthand the dance moves. I can't, I can't wait for December to see this like with my own two <laughs> eyes. In this, this changed the world. These this... dance moves literally changed the world. COVID yeah, right what, after this. what happened right after this cruise? Yeah, <laughs> it, 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 I think yeah. that has something to do with it. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't get back on a ship. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh boy. Um, yeah. So, same thing. Uh, you can send an, uh, an email to events at goldgallgetaways.com if you'd like to take a sailing uh, on this cruise with us, and you can just title it, title it uh, in the subject line, uh, Alaska 2022, July 2022, maybe something like that. We'll, we'll don't worry. We'll find it. We'll find it. So. <laughs> Uh, all righty, guys, anything else to add before we nope. move on to this week's travel news? No, I think we're good. Um, actually, Josh, I see some, a comment. It's actually oh. our boss. Um, yeah, so I'm going to answer it. Is the Barbados <laughs> Cruise boys only or Earth Girls allowed? <laughs> everybody. Uh, we Everybody's yes. invited. Yes. More the merrier. I think we're going to have a blast. Of course, of e course. Even my wife, though, because, you know, she could stay here if she had to. Well, I mean, hey, that's that's your choice. Well, I don't get in the well, middle of uh, marital disputes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody, everybody's welcome. Everybody's sure, welcome. sure. Even, uh, I mean, even if you have kids, if you want to bring kids along, yeah, you know. So it'll be fun. All right, let's move on to this week's news. Alrighty, so uh, not a lot of news coming out of Walt Disney World, but we do have one thing that I wanted to share um, that is uh, pretty recent. This this actually, I think they just started this the other day. Um, let me see if I can find it. I'm going to share my screen here real quick. Uh, this is the new facial recognition technologies uh, that they are doing. Uh, it's supposed to be for 30 days, and uh, it's pretty simple. They're saying that this is more of a way to move uh, ahead in the future with uh, less touch points, make it a little bit more seamless. Um, I think that this is a little weird uh, rather than just having them take your picture and you go up and still scan your annual pass or your ticket, your picture pops up. Um, this to me seems a little bit strange and a little intimidating. I saw it today at Magic Kingdom. I didn't take any photos of it just because I don't know. You never know uh, what Disney is watching you do. So um, 
but it is pretty simple. If you do in the next 30 days, if you're going to be in the parks and you decide to do this, um, you literally just walk up through the line. You take your hat and your sunglasses off. If you have those on, you leave your mask on and it literally just takes a picture of your face. Um, and then it attaches that picture uh, to your ticket or your annual pass or whatever. Um, and it's just supposed to make things a lot more seamless. And hopefully, you know, you don't have to like, if you have an annual pass, I know one thing for us has always been um, having to show your driver's license or another photo ID or something like that. So hopefully this kind of eliminates that stuff and uh, just makes it a little bit easier, so to speak, with uh, with everything else. But So Josh, yeah. is this going to kind of take the place of Magic Band instead of going up and scanning, you just kind of walk up? So um, just re from reading the what the report says or what their news article says and reading what the signs say at the park, um, I think that this is just going to eliminate you having to touch the touch points at all. Um, so they're still going to – Magic Bands will not go away. Um, right. Magic Bands are a great way for them to make revenue, uh, and they're a collector thing. So I don't think that they're going to go away anytime soon. Uh, and – uh, you know, as far as, as far as that goes, I think that all this is just to eliminate you having to do these touch points. With that being said, when you go through fast pass, when fast pass comes back, we're assuming that it will hopefully not as in the uh, version that Disneyland has, which is a paid version. Hopefully it's still free or included. Um, I would assume that this is also going to take place where you don't have to touch your magic band. And if that's the case, uh, those lines will move, move even faster than what they, Normally would, but you know, I mean, that's way down the road. This is just testing. That's what they're saying. It's not even guaranteed. While I was there at Magic Kingdom today, I kind of stood outside for about 10 minutes and I did not see one person walk up through there. So I don't know if it's really intimidating to guests and they don't want to go and have their picture taken like that. Um, but I didn't see anybody at all go through. I saw one person go through when I exited the park and I hung out again and watched for a little while. I did not, I just saw that one person. So who knows? Um, if this will actually come to fruition, we'll actually see it later on in the parks, but, um, it is something that if it does go well, it's going to be around obviously for a long time. So, um, but that's really it for the Disney parks, so to speak. Um, Matt, I'm actually going to let you take on, uh, universal stuff. Yeah, actually, Josh, I wanted to just because just going off our script a little bit, I didn't post it in there. Did you hear anything about Rogue uh, Disney Cruise Lines um, doing uh, United Kingdom cruises only? Did you did you hear that today? Oh no, I did not see that. Yeah, I I don't know. I don't remember where I read it. It could have been in in passing, real quick. That they're only going to do sailings out of the UK this summer. Wow, obviously that that's, is... that that's not a public an announcement by any means. That's obviously just a rumor. But I didn't know if anybody else heard what I read. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll, we might see it pop up in the chat. Somebody might, um, might also heard that. But I, I find that to be very surprising, considering that most of the cruise lines, major cruise lines right now, are talking about setting sail basically through the Caribbean to start right. uh, trying to get some revenue. I know Royal Caribbean, I believe, is also going to be setting sail, um, also in the Mediterranean. I think. Yep. Not just Israel. Uh, but there's going to be another one that I think that's going to be open to everybody, um, but you still have to be vaccinated. So I have not right. heard that, but that is pretty interesting. Yeah, um, I think I think oh, something like that you're going to hear. Um, I think you're going to hear more about that over the next couple of days if it, if there's any truth to that that yeah information. Yeah, so this is my favorite part. I know everybody's um, the is help, it really? help. Well, it's. I think it's everybody's th that wants to watch Matt get scared at Halloween Horror Nights. Yes. So um, this week, a speculation map came out from um, from Universal, and um, they're going to come out with um, the ten houses in the five scare zones. So you got the Bride of Frankenstein Lives, uh, the Wicked Growth, the Realm of the Pumpkin, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Puppet Theater, Captive Audience, Revenge of the Tooth Fairy, The Haunting on the Hill House. HHN icons captured, Beetlejuice, which most of um, Halloween Horror Nights 30 is going to be based around, Welcome to Scary, Horror in the Heartland, and Creep Show. Um, not going to lie, Josh, Puppet Theater freaks me out. 
I agree. I, I don't like dolls or puppets at all. Uh, Taylor actually has a, a th- uh, used to be like a display case of dolls. And uh, I made sure to hide those someplace where I don't ever have to see them or they can't come yeah. and get me. So, yeah, that, that that's probably the one house that I'm really, um, I'm not going to say nervous about, but I'm not going to be eager to do that right out the gate. Let's say. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think of all the houses here, probably Beetlejuice will be the least scariest. Um, just, uh, just from knowing the movie and how that's all played out. So, um, but I'm really excited for the scare zones. Scare zones are my favorite. Uh, I know you can't probably see me circling it on the map, but N, <laughs> which is the uh, Terra, what is that? Cr- Cruntus? Cruntus, Cruntus, yeah. Um, that is probably one of my favorite areas that the first year we went was the pumpkins. Uh, and they were so cool the way that they were decked out. Hopefully that'll be another good one this year, uh, when it all comes back. So yeah. again, this is just, um, you guys can look up in the right hand corner. This is a speculation map. This is not guaranteed or, uh, been made official by universal, but, uh, it's an interesting talking point of, of probably what we will see. And normally these are pretty close to being right. So, yeah. Uh, we'll see, but you know, I mean, jo- Josh, what do you think the 30th anniversary scare uh, zone of the scare zone is going to consist of? Like, wh- like you've obviously, I've never done Halloween Horror Nights. I understand what it's all about, but what do you think that one, that area is <laughs> going to uh, consist of? Uh oh, boy, I don't know. That's like a you, good question because obviously you've been through multiple scare zones more than me. I'm at zero, um, so wh- like. What do you think they 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 pick out of the? Like, to I don't. Scare I you? don't. I don't know. I mean that that K area is, in my opinion, is never really probably the greatest area for scare zones. Um, o yeah. is usually pretty interesting because it's such a large space, um, and L the last couple times has been the uh, the the zombie one. So um, I. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to put in there. Um, it might, maybe it's going to just be favorites or, uh, I, I mean, I really don't know. I think the one year yeah. this might've been, uh, was this maybe the clowns from outer space? And that was a cool one, but right. Cause that, that's not really that, that's scary. That's, that's more entertaining with some B movie foolishness. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't know. Um, but I'm I'm excited, but also petrified at the same time. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. We'll make so, sure that you always go first. <laughs> so what about one of the podcasts we have after that? We just videotape Matt going through. Yes. Since Josh, oh. you've been on there dancing. We can show Matt and yes. all his uh, facial expressions. I'm down oh, for I, that. I, I will. I will state it right now. We. I am going to be there October 24th, <laughs> um, right before our our convention. And I don't, I, I might fly home the next day if I'm freaked out. I don't, I might not make it to the rest of the convention, but I, I, I know I talked to my core, my core friends about this, that they think I'm going to be in the corner in the fetal position crying probably about an hour and a half into it, which knowing what Josh does, I'm <laughs> going to be on video for the rest of my life crying in the corner. It'll be great. But, It'll be perfect. Well, we can find some kid to give you a big group hug afterwards, you know. If if hugs are allowed, then I'll take them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> like, I, I'm excited about this. I'm assuming more information is going to be coming out about tickets soon. Yeah, I think so. Uh, hopefully right around the corner. And I would bet that they are going to go probably pretty fast, especially with it being gone last year. We need to assume that there may or may not be. I mean, it's universal that there may or may not be some type of um, restriction in attendance. So they may not be operating at 100%. The way that it feels like when we go to universal, that's not going to be the case. That It's going to be uh, 100%. But, you know, we don't know. So once those tickets become available, that is definitely something that you're going to jump on if you are seriously considering it. So, right. But cool uh moving on to the cruising news yeah matt you want to take it away 
So Royal Caribbean, we, I know we talked about it a little bit last week that um, Adventures of the Sea is uh, going to be going out of NASA. Um, booking is available now. That is not the Adventure of the Sea. That is the Harmony of the Sea, but I, close enough. I don't, I don't have a picture. Okay, of that one. You could, you, so. you could have scribbled over it. It would have been okay. <laughs> um, oh <my> gosh. <laughs> but the, the Adventures of the Sea going out of NASA, it's going to have um, a double. Uh, two days uh connected at perfect day coco k how about um, that one? yeah oh, that that's what we're talking about and then a stop in cozumel and then unwind in grand bahamian islands with the beautiful white sand beaches and like i said bookings for that actually started yesterday and i actually priced one out today because i was tempted um they're not that bad pricing is not that bad especially um for their time frame we're in right now it's very manageable, especially with Royal Caribbean's deals they have going on. And with that being said, they also made the announcement that Vision of the Seas is going to be coming back as well. Um, they, it's going to be going out of Bermuda. Um, I actually did not write down where their stops are going to be. And, oh, actually, no. Yep, yeah, I did. It's only a stopping in um, Perfect Day Coco Cay. And uh, bookings for that are going to start next week, the 29th, which off the top of my head, I think is next Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, it's next, uh, what day? Uh, Sunday. Okay. Sorry, Monday, 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 Monday. Don't worry, Monday. we'll figure it out. But, it's um, Monday for sure. Yeah, and then we didn't have a chance to really jump on it. One of the... Um, one of the other ships is going to go out of uh, the Mediterranean. Um that you talked about a little bit, Josh. I didn't get get that information quick enough uh, to post. Yes, yes. They have one um coming out of oh boy, where is it at? Uh Royal Caribbean heads to the Mediterranean this summer on Jewel of the Seas. It's gonna be sailing from Cyprus. Uh this is a seven night cruise uh departing from Cyprus on Jewel of the Seas beginning July 10th, 2021. Uh, this will be, we'll call Cyprus home for the first time in sail to the picturesque shores of Cyprus and Greece through October 23rd, 2021. Uh, clients can explore a combination of cultural rich cities. Uh, and uh, of course, again, you will have to be vaccinated. That is a requirement. And if you're under the age of 18, you'll have to have proof of a negative COVID-19 test. Right. Um, and I don't think that I saw anything about this being only for people of the region, um, which means in theory that even if you're in the States, you should be able to fly and get on this ship. So, um, boy, th this is, I don't know what the pricing is. I didn't get to look at a price at the pricing payment. I were just briefly over email. Um, this might be something that would be pretty cool to hit. And, you know, I, I mean, who knows, maybe, maybe pricing isn't that bad as they're trying to get people back onto the ships. So right. we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah. But. And then, and then we jump over a little bit to Norwegian a little bit. Norwegians, I got a feeling kind of starting to, to move in the direction of the other cruise lines and starting to try to figure out ports. Yep. They've, um, they've canceled some um, embarkation dates for some cruises from July to October and on the Encore and the Jewel and, uh the jade the joy the gem they're all pretty much i got a feeling they're going to be um sent elsewhere yeah for, yeah i think i think yeah i think they're going to start trying to move some ships around uh either into the bahamas or the caribbean uh again uh i don't i don't personally know where all of these ships normally are sailing out of but most of these may be coming out of the states uh i don't know if you if anybody out there has heard but uh the clea which is the kind of the operating body, so to speak, that speaks for the cruise line industry um, has been trying to push the CDC to basically remove the mandate that they set in place um, to allow ships to start sailing out of U.S. ports uh, starting in July. They basically scrapped that. CDC doesn't seem like that they're going to go with that. Um, and uh, so that's why we're starting to see a lot of cruise lines uh, with ships that normally would be sailing out of U.S. ports are now going to be sailing out of uh, the Caribbean uh, or Caribbean ports, so to speak. So um, with that being said, 
not all that great for us ports. Um, you know, they're losing a lot of money and they may not come back until the CDC lifts that, uh, that requirement, which is that they have to apply for a resale order and they have to do some mock testing, uh, at least 60 days or somewhere in between there, like 60 days prior to sailing or something like that. So, um, the cruise line has said that it's basically like a no sale order. Um, it's absolutely impossible for them to, you know, be able to actually make money. Um, I think we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. I think it was maybe Norwegian had said that they're basically losing about $600 million every month. Um, and that's, they're, they're not operating. That's just so that they can maintain their ships um, and pay their skeleton crew that they have on board. So uh, the cruise lines are bleeding money and, it, they are not going to come back to the States until probably the CDC lifts those regulations. So um, if you're interested in sailing, get ready to start flying to the Bahamas or the Caribbean or over to Cyprus and do a little uh, Mediterranean type of deal. So, yeah, but cool. Um, uh, so what do we got? Disneyland. I think we talked about this last week, right? Yeah. Um, Disneyland is reopening April 30th. If you haven't heard, it's limited capacity. It's only for California residents. Um, so nothing really new there. Uh, no, no other updates, uh, on that, but yeah. So anything else to add for news, news and rumors this week? I saw some things in the chat, but I don't really want to bring them up, uh, yeah. without having a little bit more information. So, but all right, cool. Um, so we've got Paul on tonight. He's been a little quiet been a little quiet sitting there that's not like and the thing about it that's you not know? like Paul. hey i'm sorry i just let you have your time here you know that's that's right because <laughs> this is now this is paul's time this is paul's time so we're going to be talking about all-inclusive resorts i've only ever been to sandals matt has not been to one paul has been to other places uh, besides sandals which is really great um because we can kind of have a little bit more of like a comparison discussion um about all-inclusive resorts and uh so uh, Paul, take it away, man. Uh, tell us a little bit, maybe um, just to start, like uh, maybe when like your first all-inclusive was, what made you decide to do an all-inclusive and why have you gone back to do more all-inclusive resorts? Wow, that's a lot of questions. Okay, um, so uh, we, we first started looking at um, all-inclusives when we got married for a honeymoon and um, didn't really know anything about them, didn't know what they included you know, what extras you had to pay for and what really, I guess, made it our go-to vacation before the last couple of years with Disney was once you pay up front, if you don't want to carry your wallet around, if you don't want to be, had to find out how much you're going to pay for drinks or meals or anything, and um, once you're there, um, you don't have to worry about that because everything's included up front. Once you pay for it, you're done. So if you don't want to leave the property, if you don't want to do incursions, or anything like that. So if you're looking to budget a vacation, uh, all inclusive is the way to do it because everything is paid for up front and, um, and you're done. You can just go there, sit back, relax and enjoy the beach. So uh, cool. um, m most all inclusives will include all your, all your meals, all your drinks, including alcohol, soft drinks, whatever you want. Uh, most of the all-inclusives that we've been to have premium drinks in your room, like I think Sandals does. So you can make mm -hmm. a drink in your room. All that's included. You don't have to worry about that. Um, and usually they'll have six or seven different restaurants that you can go to, you know, just to try out different different places. A couple of times we've been, we went to, you know, had a steak at one restaurant, left there and went to the hibachi. Since I know Josh loves hibachi, went to a hibachi oh, yeah. place. <laughs> Yeah, a couple hours later, if you're hungry, you can order room service, and all that's included in the price yeah. that you paid before you left. So um, it, it's really a relaxing time and relaxing kind of place to go if you're looking just for a stress-free, you know, vacation. Yeah, and, you know, talking about uh, you mentioned kind of leaving your wallet basically in your room uh, or not necessarily behind, but uh, one thing that – I would assume that, that they probably do at your, uh, or obviously they're not yours, but the ones that you've been to, they do this at Sandals. It's very much like a cruise line where basically if, so that you don't have to carry your wallet around with you and there is something that you want to do, let's say an excursion, um, basically what they do is they just bill that back to your room 
and you can set that up to pay at the end of the day, or you can just set that up and clear those charges at the end of your trip. So um, you really don't have to carry your wallet around the resort literally at all, um, which I think is really nice. And um, I know we, I don't know, maybe we'll get to it tonight. Maybe we won't. But um, one of the activities that Taylor and I did when we were at Sandals, we did a hobby cat and I did not bring our GoPro with us. Um, shame on me. And I didn't really want to take my phone out in case somebody who was not steering when there's only two people, which was me, would have been Taylor. I didn't want her to drop my phone. So I actually bought a case uh, down on the beach where Sandals has their like little activities desk for their water sports stuff. Um, and they just charged that right back to my room. So I didn't actually have to have anything with me to pay for it other than I just filled out a little slip and it goes back onto the room and I just took care of that at the end of the, at the end of the vacation. So it's really nice. Um, and it is, it's a lot of fun and it's super relaxing. So it is definitely something that you should uh, definitely consider. So um, we want to talk about uh, Paul a little bit about like afford affordability and, and value, I guess, of doing an all inclusive compared to, you know, something else that obviously is not. Yeah, I mean, comparing it to, um, to anywhere you go, if you go to Gulf Shores and go to the beach, you've still got to pay for restaurants. If you want to go out and have a drink or something, you're still paying for all that. So, or Disney, Disney, you know, can get expensive right. and you don't realize that until the end of the week and you look at your resort mm -hmm. bill, you're like, oh man, I did not do that, you know? Yep. So, uh, um, <laughs> You know, we've been to resorts and we love Dominican Republic and we've been to Cancun and Playa del Carmen, Mexico, and they're all, they all have their advantages, I guess, to where if you want to add in excursions or, or you know, especially where they'll have tequila tasting or cigar um, sampling, you know, especially in Punta Cana, you know, Dominican, they'll have the cigar factories come in and do that kind of stuff that you know, you'll pay a little bit extra for that, but you know that ahead of time, yeah. you know, so it all, all, all kind of works out to where you can plan what you want to spend and get your money's worth. Um, instead of feeling like some, some vacations, when you leave, you're like, man, I, I didn't, I didn't take advantage of that. Yeah. Well, you know, and another good point that I think you made already earlier, Paul is when you, whenever, whenever we start talking about dining at an all-inclusive resort, uh, it's all inclusive. And which means that when you go to sit down um, and they give you a menu, you could order two or three appetizers if you wanted to, and two or three entrees. You know, if you sit down and you order, you know, I don't know, calamari and then a steak, if you don't like your steak, you could just let them know and ask for something else and they'll bring it out for you. It's not um, this thing where they kind of limit you, even though it's all inclusive, but they limit you to what you can necessarily have. Um, it really is. I, I like to think of it as like a Disney cruise. And when they do their rotational dining, when we go in there and we sit down and eat, you know, if, if I get something and I really like it and I say, wow, boy, I could really use another one, even though I don't need it, but I mean, come on, you're on vacation, right? Eat, eat right, some food. Right. Um, you know, you just ask and they'll bring you more. Um, and I think that's what's what's really nice is the flexibility. Um, and of course, you're saying, you know, have a steak and then maybe you go over for hibachi. Um, what we did the other night was we went in and we had they have a sushi restaurant that's connected right to their hibachi restaurants. So we went in and we ate some sushi and we just hung out in there and then we went and had hibachi. And then if we wanted to, we didn't because we were super full already because we had sushi beforehand. But we could have went right back into the sushi restaurant, sat down and had more. Um it is, you know, when you talk about dining, it is truly uh, very all-inclusive. And uh, Val has a great question here. Are dining reservations needed? Um, Paul, you have not done sandals, right? No, is I have not. Okay. Um, so I'll let you talk about the other the other resorts that you have been to. Uh, at least at sandals, they do have a handful of restaurants that do require you to make reservations. Um and basically, once you get there and you check in for the day, um, you can go to the front desk or you can call the front desk from your room and set up those reservations. Still doesn't cost you anything, um, but it just helps them to kind of manage and disperse, you know, the people around the resort a little bit more. So 
Uh, I would always recommend that you do dining res reservations the very first day that you get there. I know sometimes it's kind of tough to be like, well, I don't know what I want to eat, but <laughs> it is best to do it that way. Paul, is it is it like that um, where you've been, where you some restaurants you do need a reservation? No, we've been to the Excellence and uh, Finest Resorts about a dozen times. And uh, the Grand Riviera Princess Resort in Cancun, none of those required reservations at all. Um, if you're club level, you'll have a restaurant that's just for club level people, and they do require reservation. But, I mean, a lot of times you can just walk right up and go right in. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, mostly it's it's on the the dress code. They don't. They won't really care about a reservation. If you got to wait five minutes, you got to wait. But most of the places you have to wear a collared shirt, whether a button-up shirt or a polo or something like that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. sandals. Um, they did have a dress requirement, but it seemed to only go with certain nights and not always at the restaurants. Um, so that is uh, something that's a little bit different. So if you're planning on all inclusive, right? And Paul knows his stuff when it comes to all inclusive stuff. Um, obviously, having a travel agent helping you book uh, an all inclusive is extremely helpful, and they can help you uh, with that along the way while you're while you're planning. So, um, yeah. you know, let's we talked about restaurants, uh, Paul. Let's talk about I think one of the most uh, probably important things that make a all inclusive resort. Uh, really all inclusive <laughs> and money worthy, which are uh, the bars, and um, you know it, it's. I, I think I don't, I, and I'll let I'll let Paul speak to uh, where he's been before. But over at Sandals, um, you know, I mean, unless they're pouring bottom shelf alcohol into the into the top shelf bottles and then putting them back up on the shelves, uh, they are they are usually pouring top shelf stuff, um, which is really great and. If for some reason you get a drink and you feel like it doesn't have enough alcohol in it, you can uh, you can finish that and literally ask for the same thing and say, I I'd like that made with double, you know, a, a double or whatever. Um, I saw other people doing it. I had a mojito and I thought, man, it doesn't really taste like it's got as much rum in it. So I got another one. I said, could you double that for me? And they are like, sure. And then I really tasted it. So, I mean, like, you know, it, it is truly all inclusive in the fact that, uh, with alcohol, right? I think that that is a, a big thing. You know, if you're coming, you're going to kind of want to get your money's worth uh, when it comes to that kind of stuff, right? I mean, we, we spent a lot of time at the swim up bar. I don't know about you, Paul, but that was our it's place. It's amazing. To so, yeah, I mean, there's bars everywhere at all inclusive. Yeah. You know, like you said, they're, you know, they'll have the premium bottles up on the shelf and, and they don't mind pouring it. And yes. after a couple, you don't know if they're putting the cheap stuff in that or not, you know. <laughs> this is very true. This is very true. It's, especially That's at the ones we went to where, you, where you've got it in your room. I mean, you can request whatever you want in there, whether it's yes. some special brand. If they've got it, they don't mind putting it in there. Yeah. But. Uh, you know, and, and the other thing, too, about um, about that is – I mean, it's just it, it. I don't really know if there's like a certain time that they actually start serving um, because we didn't usually end up at the pool till about eleven o'clock. But um, it, it really is pretty much all day and all night. And um, even you know the, the thing with sandals when we were there, they actually put. Uh, <laughs> so if you do club level at sandals, that that's the basically the the kind of standard of where you need to start to have alcohol in your room and have. Uh, in-room dining service, basically, uh, they will have four bottles. They have vodka, gin, a dark rum, and there's one more that I'm missing. Uh, it's not tequila, and uh, maybe like a some type of uh, bourbon whiskey. Or, or whiskey. Yeah, it's a whiskey, yeah. and then a bottle of wine. And they literally tell you whenever you get there, um, you know, if you finish a bottle, you just call down to the desk, and they will bring you another one right away. I will say that we've never been able to do that, um, and nor have I ever tried. Uh, not really one to try that, but um, you know, it's something to think about, right? If if you're trying to, you know, do like a price comparison or price cost, so yeah, or if you got a, a big group that's going with you, everybody can come back to your room. You don't have to wait on a waiter or a server to bring you everything. You've got everything yep. you need. 
Yes, absolutely. Lot, yeah. Um, so I, I'm actually, I'm just trying to find, uh, I wanted to find a video clip uh, to show you guys. Uh, and I'm, I'm not being successful at the moment. Um, well, you were talking earlier about the restaurants. There's some, there's some all inclusives that, you know, give you your drinks and the buffet buffet is all you get in that. The rest of them would be a la carte. So I think okay. that's where a travel agent would come in, let the travel agent do the work. So you know exactly what you're getting. And if you want to steer towards something where you have access to all six or seven or whatever restaurants, you know, that agent can make sure you get that, that particular type of resort. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point, Paul. Uh, excellent point. Uh, oh man, I can't find anything. Okay. Um, so let's talk a little about, uh, about activities, I guess. Um, Paul, whenever you guys go, what are like what are some of the activities that you guys enjoy doing um, when you're down there? Um, included, they'll have a lot of anything at the pool. You'll have volleyball, yoga, cooking classes. Um, they have salsa dancing at one, all included all, already. But oh, wow. you know, you can pay extra for excursions. We went um, scuba diving, where you can get it's about an hour resort certification there for scuba diving. Mm -hmm. And then we went to another beach where you can go, I think 60 feet down and, and scuba dive and use their equipment. You can go four wheeler riding through the back country. Um, I mean, everywhere has zip lines. Cancun has yeah. a great water park called shell ha that has everything from zip lines to swimming with dolphins and doing the snuba under, uh, you know, underwater and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I know that that's one thing at Sandals that they always uh, really, I think, try to push people towards. If you have a, or if you're interested in doing scuba diving, they will provide you with a class um, that is an additional charge for you so that you can actually go scuba diving, but everything else other than that is included. So if you already have your certification, you don't have to pay anything. Uh, they will take you out and they will do that. Now, at least at Sandals, the one that we were at, they only do it certain days of the week. So it's not a thing that you can do necessarily every day all the time. Um, but I think it's always in the first thing in the morning so that you can get out early and go do that. And then you can kind of come back and relax and, and do other things. So, which is really nice, but, uh, uh what else? Like, uh, I mean, you, you know, you know every, I think every place has a spa. I'm sure sandals has a, uh, pretty nice spa did you get massaged on and everything we, we did not get a massage uh while we were there I, I we we thought about it um but again whenever you only have like a few days um because we you know we weren't there for a whole week we were only there for like two real whole days um we just did not prioritize that as one of them but um the the spa is pretty nice um we didn't really get to see any of the actual rooms, not that there's really anything to show. Uh, I think that they all pretty much look the same, but, um, and they were all it basically being in use. That's what they told us when we did a tour, but, um, you know, but it's a regular spa. It, it offers all of the same things that you would get anywhere else. So, uh, and I don't know, Paul, I don't know if you've seen this, but normally uh, they will offer special deals for you. Uh, you can almost haggle them a little bit. At least that's the way it seemed at Sandals. Um, for some of the spot treatments because they're just trying to fill some of those spots throughout the day. Yeah, if you'll kind of hang out, they'll give you a, a you know good combo price on, on a spa treatment along with another excursion or something. I, you know, a lot yep. of folks were getting a massage, a couple's massage down on the beach. Oh, we never did problem. that, but that's got to be awesome, you know, especially on a nice, beautiful day on the beach in the Caribbean. Oh, for sure. For sure. Uh, so, Paul, you uploaded some photos, so I'm just going to throw some stuff up if you want to talk about it a little bit. Um, this is one of them. Uh, is this a, a like a view from a room? Yeah, we stayed. That's at Excellence in Punta Cana, Dominican Republic. We stayed in a, it's called an Excellence Club two-story rooftop. So that's overlooking um, the ocean and their Excellence Club. Okay. So um, did, did they have, um, do you know, if, did they have like swim up? rooms there yeah is right, that a thing? right, is right that below, below that is a, is a swim up 
Okay. Nice. And I mean, those are nice. We've never stayed in a swim up. You usually stay in the rooftop. Okay. Just because you get a, a two story view, you get a small swimming pool slash jacuzzi on the top where you can lay out by yourself, privacy, and just relax. Um, and then what's this? Is this something that you guys did? Uh, no, that was an excellence Punta Cana. My wife's birthday was that day. And okay. They pay attention to detail. And so when we went, we kept that cabana the whole week. I mean, you don't reserve it. We just happened to show up every morning at eight o'clock and grab that one. So when nice. I showed up that morning, they had it all decorated and, oh, wow. and reserved for us. So, Wow, that's really cool. That's really cool. I mean, if you go to a certain brand all the time, doesn't matter which one, you start to know the folks, you know, and kind of build a relationship where where they remember you when you come back. Um, that's really funny you bring that up, uh, because I had mentioned earlier about a couple that we met while we were there who had been to Sandals uh, at least 34 days or something like that. Um, and they, they knew a lot of the staff very well and the staff knew them very well. So, uh, I'm sure that this is across the board with these resorts. Uh, but I know specifically speaking for Sandals, cause that's where we've been. They do, um, like Paul said, they do pay attention to those things. Uh, and, a, a, a job that all travel agents should have or should be doing when they're when they're booking the stuff for you is if you're doing a special celebration, uh, they should be letting the resort know that because these resorts will do some special things for you, just like just like they did for Paul, uh, him and his wife. So they do pay attention to those things, which is really nice. Um, was this part of that same thing? No, that was just at every night they come in oh, wow. and, and, and make your bed and you know, make swans or whatever kind of towel art that they can do. Yeah. Nice. It's the little tension to detail that keeps making you go back to one place instead of trying something else. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Um, let me pull up some other ones. Is this same, this is the same resort or a different one? Uh, that's in excellence El Carmen, which is in Punta Cana, Dominican Republic. It's okay. just their newer modern vibe resort. Uh, same place, I believe. Okay. Yeah. yeah. This is nice. Um, now are these beaches here, uh, private? So like only residents of say the resort have access to this beach or is it a public beach? Uh, they're supposed to be private. Every once in a while you'll get somebody strolling down, but the, the waiters and, and the security and everybody are quick to just keep them all moving. Okay. That's the way it is in, in Dominican, you know, Mexico is different, but yeah, Dominican, they're private beaches. Okay. Mexico, they're uh, public they're, beaches then? Yeah, it's, it's a public beach. Okay. Yeah. That, so for us, when we were at uh, Antigua this past week, the beach there is a public beach. All beaches in Antigua are like that. Um, you know, that's made by the government basically there. So uh, I would say one thing that I would be really interested in with, with the place that you guys were just, or the one that we just showed there, is having that privacy of the beach. You know, one thing is we would go down to the beach and they have people down there who are kind of like, you know, they're trying to sell you things. Right. And yep. they do have part of the beach kind of fenced off, so to speak. It's a it's a wooden fence. It doesn't look abstract or, you know, kind of gross or anything, but it is a separation from the public beach to Sandals property. Um, and they actually have security at all entry points to the resort. So, um, so those people never come up in, but that is something that if you're going out there to the beach, eh, they might try to talk to you a little bit. So, um, so but you'll go ahead, Paul. Yeah. At a excellent spoon to kind of right off property. There's a, a wooden fence kind of like you talked about. And on the other side of that, there's a Walmart and a home Depot. Oh, wow. <laughs> and some other hardware stores, just a shack where they sell their trinkets that they make there, you know, the jewelry yeah. and paintings and stuff, but they named it Walmart, Home Depot, whatever you want. So, yeah, yeah, that's funny. Kind of makes you feel like home. That is, <laughs> that is funny. Um, so I will, uh, I will share, share this little video clip. Um, this was from, maybe I won't, never mind. It, it's not working. Okay. Um, anyways, I was just going to show a clip of the pool there at Sandals that we had in the in the swim up bar. Sorry that my uh, apparently it's not working, but um, 
I think that's where we ended up spending most of our time while we were there, just because it's it's easy. It's a nice place to relax. Uh, there are wait staff who will come around and they will actually get you food if you want some food. Um, usually they're mostly there to get you more drinks. Um, but of course, the swim up bar is pretty darn close. So we just did that. Um, we talked about some activities. This was something that I have never done before. Taylor and I have never done before. Um, this is a hobby cat. And this is my own uh, drone footage. This was awesome. One of the coolest things that we've ever done. Um, and that was included. Um, they will give you lessons on how to use it. Sometimes they may not be as um, in-depth as you might like. But uh, they kind of just briefly walked us through it. And we set sail right off the beach, never having done any type of sailing before. Um, and it's a lot of fun. We were where this is at right here. This is this is easily, I don't know, a mile away from the actual resort itself. Um, and you, we just went out to a point. We turned around and we came back in. So another thing, just you know, another one of those activities that that we always really enjoy. Um, Paul, should we talk about uh, the resorts in general? Right. Um, some resorts are adults only. Some resorts are family. Um, yeah. You know, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, we um, there's adults only where it's usually 18 years and up. Yeah, but mostly what we've seen is, you know, it's usually 30 years old and up or something like that. And just because there's a lot of bars, people do a lot of drinking. You know, it's not a yeah. it's not a rowdy crowd. You know, you never it's yeah. not something where you would worry about if you don't drink. You're worried about going there and and somebody running your day there, you know. Right. Um We've stayed at a family resort one time and, and it was it was good to have kids run around. So if you've got kids, usually they'll have kind of adults only restaurant where you can go get away. Um, they might have daycare there to watch the kids on the beach. You know, they can't let them in the water, though, because I guess that's a liability issue for, you know, small kids. Um, we've stayed at the finest, which is a uh, adults only section and it's a family section. And we were just in the adults only side. You never had any issues with kids running around. You know, if you didn't want to see them, you didn't have to interact. I mean, there was really never any issue with, with the kids or anything. So, so if you, if you're going with a group, if you're going with family um, members that, that have kids, I just don't plug my headphones. Uh, <laughs> I guess as far as Thanks, Josh. the, um, First I, always have, I always have something that happens to me. Um, <laughs> You know, we've never been to one of the family ones. Um, I think that's something that we would like to, to go to. We've been talking about um, briefly, and I don't want to put any crazy thoughts into anybody's head that it might happen. But, you know, doing a uh, kind of a, a group, you know, a little <laughs> uh, vacay instead of doing it on a cruise line, maybe we'll do it to an all-inclusive, you know. Um, Paul, being that you have more experience, you know, what, what, what would you – what do you think would be better to do? Would it be better to do something that is kind of family friendly or would it be better to say, Hey, you know, we're going to try and plan this group vacation. We're going to stick it with the adults only, you know, I mean, what, what do you think? I mean, you could do the split where they've got a family side and an adult side. So if you've got people that at the end of the night, they just want to go back just them. You don't hear kids running around or something like that. They can yeah. do that if they want. Okay. I mean, that's the best best of both worlds, really, on that. Right. Okay. All right. All so right. There, there's there's no reason not to do a group stay at all inclusive now. Oh. Just, <laughs> I like where you're going that. with this. I like good where job. you're going with this. <laughs> that is good. Um. So we briefly talked about the spa. I think we did kind of hit on. Um. You know, we we definitely talked about acti activities. Um. Did we? really kind of mentioned that there are some kind of extra slash hidden fees. I think we did talk a little bit about that. You know, one of them was being snorkeling or not snorkeling, sorry, scuba diving. You know, if you don't have your license or you're not certified, but you want to get certified, that is an additional charge. Um, but you don't necessarily need to, um, you know, if you already have it, then you don't have to pay for anything. Um, somebody had asked about water sports. Um, where to go? 
Uh, Eric had said, you know, are jet skis usually included or is this an additional charge? Same with golfing. Um, at sandals, jet skis are not included. So anything that is actually motorized is usually not included uh, in your stay. So if you want to do like a catamaran cruise, which is usually a pretty big group of people, normally they'll go out and snorkel. Um, they'll also do catamaran cruises for scuba diving. Um, that'll be an additional charge to go out and do that because it is separate from what would they would call as being included. Um, and golfing at Sandals, uh, I believe the only thing that you have to pay for is your bag rental fees, but that's not at all of the resorts. Um, those are at specific resorts. So if that's something that you're interested in, you know, contacting your travel agent and saying, hey, you know, this is what I'm interested in. You know, can you help me book the right resort destination that I want to go to for that? So, um, and of course, Paul, you talked about the spa. Are we missing anything else? Uh, no. Eh. I mean, we're talking about club level and because I think y'all were in club level and sandals and you get a few extra perks with. Yeah. You know, yeah. Let's and, talk about that. Go ahead. Um, from what we experienced, if you stay in a club level, which is a little upgrade on, on your perks, you know, you can get included in at dinner on the beach for, for a couple. Um, a lot of times there's an, a, a club level section rope golf, you know, on the beach, there's more cabanas and stuff like that. Um, at, I know at secrets, um, if you're in their preferred category that at their, um, golf resort in Cancun that that usually includes one round of golf at, at their golf complex, you know, and then the rest you would have to pay for after that. Okay. Um, so at the sandals resorts that we have been to, uh, most of that stuff is already, well, no. So you can do private dining out on the beach. Like you said, that's an additional charge. Um, another thing that sandals does is, they provide, uh, quote unquote, free photography for you. But of course, you do have to pay for those images, uh, usually at the end of your stay. Um, and they do do some like different types of packages um, where you can pay per photo or you can pay less per photo if you buy so many photos or you can pay one price and get everything. Um, uh, Pam also mentioned, here's something, uh, um, Paul, I don't know if you can talk about too which is um, sometimes these resorts will do special pricing packages if you have a wedding or if you have a honeymoon. Um, you know, I know Sandals will do something where if you stay so many nights, they will do your wedding for free, basically. And that'll include, um, I think, a photographer. They're doing a new thing now where you can live stream the events, um, and that'll be included. It usually, I think, like maybe flowers are included. The ceremony itself is included. Uh, they do a couple of different things. There are some add-ons that you can do, but um, another thing to consider, you know, when you're talking about all-inclusive stuff. Um, so, usually on the, I mean, what we found out on our honeymoon is there wasn't a package, but you document all that stuff, or your travel agent will document that in, in your package, so the people already know what you're there for. Because mm -hmm. when you get there, you'll have a banner on your door that says "Happy Birthday" or you know, honeymoon or wedding or, or whatever. So, I mean, we would, you would show up at a restaurant and they would decorate your table or, you know, special bottle of wine or champagne or something like that, that you're not expecting that just makes the trip that much more special. Nice. Right. Uh, and uh, moving back to club level versus non-club level at Sandals, from our experience, there's only one category below club level uh, that, in that category, basically, the only thing that you don't get that everybody else, for the most part, gets is alcohol in the room and room service. Um, you take the next step up, and that's club level. You get all of those things. Um, above club level, at Sandals at least, they have what's called butler suites. And you basically get a you're like your own butler who uh, 24 hours throughout the day, I'm pretty sure, um, is there if you need something. So... Um, you also get 24 hour room service. I think club level at sandals, you don't get that. It's only from, I think like seven to 10 PM at night. If you have a Butler suite, you get that um, service 24 hours throughout the day. They do also do some other special things for you. Um, you're paying extra for that, obviously. And um, 
Paul, you can also add to this uh, from where you've been. Um, tips are completely included. So that there is no tipping, uh, at least for us at Sandals, unless you've got a butler. They do encourage you to, you know, tip them because they are going above and beyond doing a lot of things for you. So um, another thing that you don't really have to worry about having cash is that everything as far as tipping goes included. Is that the same where you guys were at? I mean, it's the same where we're at. Um, if you tip, you know, especially in Dominican, they're a whole lot more appreciative of, of even a dollar, you know, every other drink or something like that. Because a lot of times these people, you know, that's their only job and they're feeding seven or eight people off of what, right. you know. So, so I mean, I, I think a tip here or there goes a long way in showing, you know, I don't know, respect or a thank you or, or whatever, however you want to say it. Okay. Yeah. At Sandals, they, they literally do not allow you to tip at all. They won't even wow. accept it. So, um, wow. you know, hopefully, hopefully they're being compensated well. Uh, of course, I don't, I don't know if they are, but hopefully they are. Um, let's see what else, um, what else have we have not really touched on? Um, um, as far as like on club level, I don't know how it is at, you know, at Sandals, but at some of these, if you're a club level, you have, you know, a specific restaurant, nobody else can have, okay. you know, just exclusive for, for that club. You know, that's the way it is at excellence and finest. And you'll have the, like a club only restaurant and bar you could go to yeah which is I, go ahead sorry well i mean it's just nice because there's less people in there you can stretch out and relax watch the ball game if you okay. need to nice yeah. yeah i to my knowledge i don't think sandals has anything like that they may you know we've only done club level um and really club level i i would really look at club level as kind of being more of the standard that's where they're always going to you know sandals will wants you to push to, to be in, um, they may have some extra perks for, uh, you know, the Butler suites, but they're, to my knowledge, they don't have any, um, you know, private beaches or private areas for beaches, um, for anybody that is paying a little bit more. Uh, and you know, one thing that comes to mind, which I think is really nice is that Royal Bohemians, the Royal Bohemian resort, which is the Sandals resort and the Bahamas, they have an additional Island that you can actually go out to. And, um, that's not, you know, limited to just a, a, a single level, so to speak, you know, everybody can go to that, whether you're club level or I'm trying to think what the other term is that is, is below that. Um, but literally anybody and everybody who's staying there can go there. So you don't have to be club level or Butler, as long as you're there staying, you can, you can go over to there. So, uh, which is really nice. Um, and sorry so what was a dress code yeah. like there at a uh, sandals for to go in for like a dinner restaurant did you have to dress up did you have to have on clothes toe shoes that kind of stuff um so for the couple of days that we were there uh at least at, at this one we did not see what they called their like more i don't know dressing up they had a specific term for it. It wasn't something that I've really seen used a lot before, but, but we, we did not have to do that. It was basically casual, um, resort casuals, what they called it, uh, every night for dinner. So, um, it was, it was just like, you know, khakis and a nice shirt. We saw some people going with khakis and a t-shirt. We saw people, you know, totally dressed up with, you know, a button down. I don't think I saw anybody wearing a tie, but you know, definitely a lot of ladies wearing dresses. Um, you know, button downs, pants, nice shoes. So, um, I think Taylor pretty much every night wore a dress and I usually had a polo or a button down on and khaki shorts. So, um, but they do have that where the only requirement is that you just have to wear, I think pants, um, and not necessarily <laughs> close toes. Well, that's good. Close, yeah. close. Well, I mean, as, as opposed to wearing shorts, right. So, yeah. um, to make it a little bit more formal, so to speak. But, um, yeah, but I guess, I guess at, at the place that you were at, they do have that though, right? Where you do have to dress up a little bit. And I know my feed just died, but I, I'm still here. So keep going. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it, it, everything was a, a collared shirt and like closed toed shoes. They didn't care if we had on pants or shorts, but 
you know, some kind of collared button up polo and just a closed, closed toe shoes. I mean, it would get you in. Yeah. You know, we had, we had some people get turned away for wearing swim up shorts and a t-shirt. Uh, well, I mean, that's, I mean, that's nice that they do still try to follow that. Um, because it, it does help to make the atmosphere feel just that much more, I think, luxurious probably isn't the right word, but it does kind of keep that atmosphere feel that they want to, uh, I think, just have in general. So I, I like that. Um, again, I didn't see anybody at Sandals really wearing, you know, kind of swimming trunks and like a cover up in. But uh you know, I think if if they did, I would hope that they told them to kind of like maybe go back and, and change because, you know, it's a little bit different. If you want to sit down, you want to have a nice meal. I think having that that correct atmosphere is is pretty nice. So, yeah. And if you want uh, to dress up like that, you could get room service or go to the buffet. I mean, that was perfectly right. fine to go to the buffet. So, yeah, um, I'll touch on this question right here. Can you combine a Royal Caribbean cruise with a stay at Sandals? I heard I've heard you can. I actually don't have uh, an answer for that one. Um, that's, I, I don't know. I ahead. don't know. If, ahead, I don't know if you can specifically through the two companies, but uh, obviously we can talk about the Barbados cruise that we're going on. Um, there is two um, Sandals Resorts in the Barbados, which is about twenty-five minutes away from the Barbados cruise port. So you could actually pull that off if you wanted to. Um, Going out of Nassau, you got the was it the Grand Bohemian? That's yes, very very close by as well. Um, y- you have options to do them. I'm sure they're not combined. I but um, something like that, I would recommend a hundred percent book through a travel agent because that's um, a lot of lot of work that's um, you don't you don't want to handle. Let let your travel agent handle that to to put that travel package together for you. Yeah. Um, definitely, definitely have, um, somebody who can, who can help you with that because, uh, Oh, sorry. Uh, my assistant was just bringing me a battery. Hold on one second. Go ahead, guys. <laughs> um, Paul, w- one question I did see in the chat and I, and I kind of, this interests me too. I'm not really a beach guy per se, do, most of these places have like a lazy river or something. I'm a, I'm a two kind of in the tube. Just let me float around for a couple hours. Do like the resorts you've been to have that ex- experience? Uh, not the ones that we've been to, but I know there are, you know, are ones that have either like a two a tube or a, a wave pool or something like that. That's more, you know, more. I don't know activity instead okay. of just a steel pool. Yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. we can find something for you, Matt. Don't worry. Yeah, it's like <laughs> I, I need my lazy river where it can stop. And perfect idea would be you, it stops off at the, the swim up bar and then you can get back in and you just keep going. And I, I think that would be the ideal setup. See, I, I don't know. I'm not, I didn't, wasn't that big a beach person, but once you get in a cabana, somebody brings you a drink or a pizza it's hard not to be that kind of guy anymore, you know? Yeah. Josh, welcome back. Thank you, friends. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this is um, only the 12th episode and the fourth time you've yeah, had your I battery. I, I know. Yeah. I know. Um, all right. Uh, so this has been a great episode. Uh, I think something that we should definitely hit on because if people are planning to hit up these destinations within the next, uh, you know, who knows how long uh, these requirements will be in place. But something that we definitely, definitely, definitely need to talk about are uh, travel restrictions and how to combat those. Uh, combat combating is the, the wrong word. Um, how to handle those travel restrictions? Um, so obviously we're talking about COVID. Um, and uh, Paul, do you have anything that you want to start with? Um, sure. Um, at, in Dominican Republic right now, they don't require any kind of tests when you go in. They're randomly selecting. Um, people for rapid test and temperature text test when you go in. Wow. Wow. That's and crazy. Then, yeah. But of course, you know, um, when you come back, once you get there, you'll schedule your COVID test for whatever day you need to. So you have it when you get back on the plane to come back home. Okay. Awesome. 
Um, so going into, and, and this is going to vary by country, obviously, um, uh, given from, from Paul's example, uh, right now, um, at Antigua, we had to have a PCR test within seven days of traveling, um, to our destination. So, and it obviously had to be negative. Um, some places, some other countries, islands are requiring you to have something as quick as 72 hours, uh, with a PCR, which I think is really, really tough because it's tough to get those back um, sometimes. But, you know, it's going to vary. So using a travel agent right now, I cannot stress that enough. And of course, I know that we're a travel agency and it sounds like that we are you know, trying to sell ourselves here, but it is really, really important. Um, face coverings at Sandals were, uh, I wouldn't say optional. They are encouraged, but are basically required whenever you go inside um, somewhere that is like enclosed, right? So if you go into the gift shop, you go into the store, um, you're going to buy something that's branded. Uh, the cafe uh, is inside. So whenever you go inside, you should have a mask on. Um, they weren't necessarily yelling at people uh, to put them on, but it is uh, encouraged to have those on when you're walking around. When you're outside and you know, you're know you doing your thing, they are not required to be on at all. Um, so I, I will definitely say that it felt, um, whether it was right or wrong, we won't talk about that, but you know, it felt very relaxing and it felt very freeing, so to speak, to be able to just have a vacation and relax and not have a mask on, um, uh, the entire time while we were trying to do something. So, um, that was really nice. But again, all of those things are going to vary depending on where exactly that you are going. So again, you need to really, really be careful, um, whenever you travel. Um, Paul, I'm sorry. I, I did not hear. Are they in the Dominican? Are they providing those tests for guests returning? Yes. Most you? resorts are, are providing that, you know, free of charge. Okay. Once you come down there and you check in, they'll schedule you for your, your rapid test for whenever you need to leave. Um, okay. Yeah. So Sandals was doing the same thing. They were doing rapid tests, um, basically the day before, um, we did ours on Tuesday, um, before we left and they provided us the results, um, that next morning before we got on the bus. So, um, I think, and of course I don't have any personal experience with this because we tested negative, but if you do test positive, um, it is a rapid test and they will know fairly quickly. Um, at least at Sandals, what they're doing right now is they will start setting up accommodations for you on property um, free of charge. This isn't the same at all resorts. Some of them are not free of charge. Some of them are 50% of whatever the cost was, um, but they will put you up for like the next uh, seven to 10 days, whatever it is for you to test negative um, and then go back home. So yeah. uh, again, it varies. So this is just personal experience from the resorts that we were at. Um, it's good to know. Um, let me uh, add this question in here uh, from Philip, which was that if you got a vaccine, do you have to get tested? Um, I believe regardless of whether or not you've had the vaccine, they're going to require you to be tested um, because there's not really an official, I think, like passport card, which is what they've been talking about doing. So regardless of whether or not you've been vaccinated, plan on being tested uh, no matter what, uh, arriving and departing. So that is well, something Josh to consider. And like uh, Costa Rica, you don't need a test, but you have to buy travel insurance that covers, you know, okay. quarantine. So if you've got to stay, you know, that, that covers your quarantine costs. Okay. Wow. Okay. So, yeah. So that's a prime example, again, of how resorts and countries, so to speak, are operating very differently. And, um, you know, having an agent uh, like Paul, who is, is very knowledgeable about this stuff, which is really great, knows way more than I do. Um would be very, very uh, helpful for you um, if you're looking to start planning. So, um, and I, I, you know, honestly, and, I, and I'm sure Paul would say the same thing, you know, it, it's a great time to travel. There's still not a lot of people out there who are doing it. So a lot of these resorts are not um, packed, which is really nice. Not that they normally would be, but, you know, there's less people there than there normally would be, which is really nice. So, um. Yeah. Anything else to add? Did we miss anything? Uh, I just want to say there's a all inclusive on you know, everybody's budget. It doesn't right. have to be the top or anything. So I mean, if you're looking for it, contact somebody at GoGale. 
and they can try to find something that's in your budget. You you can talk, contact this guy right here, Paul. Paul at uh, goldgowgetaways.com. <laughs> we know that guy. Hey. Um, anything else? Anything else to add? Not really. Josh, do we want to mention yeah. like the, with sandals uh, right now, it's the $98 um, block of the room for the next three years. Yes. I think that's, I think that's a, a great, a great point right now of with sandals. Um, and that's, that's uh, sandals and beaches where it's $98 to block off your room till the end of 2023. And um, we did a, a live webinar live stream this past week. If you guys missed that and you're interested, excuse me. Um, and you, you missed out on some of that uh, really great credit. Sandals is always doing deals. Um, they actually are going to have a really great one coming up here for Easter. So if you're interested, let us know. Send us an email. Send Paul an email. You can send Matt an email. Um, you can send an email not to events. I was going to throw the events one up there. Uh, but you could send one to info at goldgowgetaways.com. And uh, we will be able to assist you and help you guys along the way in planning um, your next vacation. So... And, uh, you know, I really like what Paul said. There is literally a place out there for you to fit your budget. So um, I know I'm, I'm probably just going to push everybody towards you, Paul. So if somebody sends me an email <laughs> or a message, they're coming to you. Hey, that sounds great. Awesome. So um, I don't have anything else to add. We ran a little bit longer this week, but, you know, here's what it, it is. No big deal. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, I think something that we forgot to mention last week is if – we are still hiring, and if you are interested, here's the info at gogogetaways.com email. Um, if you're interested in becoming a travel agent, we are still looking for new people to join our family. Um, Pam, I'm sure, can quickly comment the proper email to send, or you can uh, head on over to gogogetaways.com. Uh, there will be a tab in the in the top somewhere that says join our team, and uh Somebody will be in touch with you, uh, whether it's Pam or one of our other agents who are um, helping to assist with uh, hiring new people. So uh, it's a lot of fun. And if you come a travel agent, you can take advantage of some fam trips like Taylor and I just did uh, this past week down to Sandals. So, um, yeah, that's all I got. Yeah. Matt? Um, make the announcement now that we're off, we're taking a week off for the oh, I greatest – yeah, guys, we're going to be taking next Friday, next week off. Yes. Um, everybody in the comments right now, um, next Sunday, Easter Sunday, Mr. Josh is yeah, going to be turning is. the big 3 0. So we're going to take the weekend yep. off so he can celebrate with his family. Yeah. Yep, yep. Party it up. <laughs> I don't know now, if I'll be doing much 30. partying, but I'll be doing a lot of working. I'll be doing a lot of working, even while yeah. at home. But yeah, but so we're we're, we're going to give Josh the the weekend off of the podcast, and I appreciate it. I appreciate uh, we it. appreciate it. But we're back uh -oh. April 9th. for a pretty big episode first, with our first outside guest. Yes, we got Laurie Bond, one of the directors of sales management. With Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines. Yep. And from what I've noticed in my conversations with her, if you know Royal Caribbean, I know a lot of our agents here. Everybody knows who Vicky Freed is. She's she runs the show with Royal. Yep. This is her partner in crime. Her right hand. When I talked to Vicky to try to get somebody on the podcast, she said, Laurie's the one you want. Laurie yep. will take care of you guys. And I'm excited, especially with all the stuff with Royal Caribbean coming out, where we can just have a great interaction about Royal Caribbean. Maybe we'll get some inside information on what's going to happen. Yeah. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. I'm super excited. It's going to be a great episode. Um, boy, I'm a little nervous, but, you know, we'll see. It'll that's, be good. That's It'll why, be good. That's why, that's why Pam is joining us on this. Yes. Night. Yep. Matt will be actually hosting. I won't even – I'm just going to sit back. <laughs> I'm going to sit back on this one. 
it's Tom like with that, when I sent when I originally sent that email to just kind of like yeah, just see what see what's out there and just kind of see if I get a response. Yeah, and it was literally five minutes later. Yes, we'd love to be on the podcast, and it yeah. just kind of it just blew my mind on how quick Royal Caribbean was to respond back to just our little fun podcast about travel. Yeah. So it's going to be exciting. Paul, anything else to add? No, I'm good. You? I, I have nothing else. <laughs> I have nothing else. I'm going to throw it over to Matt to uh, end it for the night. All righty. Make sure to uh, like and subscribe on the Gold Girl Getaways YouTube channel. And now we're off to plan your next vacation. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.